Four brilliant moves, over the board tournament, classical game. Of course, I have to brag about it, right? <laughs> All right, guys. So in this video, we're going. I'm going to show you this game that I played actually recently. And of course, we got English opening my opponent chose and we're playing the King's Indian defense. Now, this is the same opponent, guys, from this other game that I showed you a few weeks ago. Back then, he played the, we played the Pierce defense, very aggressive game. But this time he started with knight f3, then c4. And of course, we got into the English opening. I'm choosing the King's Indian defense. Now, there are a few ways to go about it. But I said, you know what? Let me play e5. And after d3, I'm going to play it like we learned on lesson number 80. If you remember, well, 79-80, I showed you how to play the King's Indian attack. That's with, that's with the white pieces, right? Well, here I'm using the same ideas we learned from Bobby Fischer, how to play it against the Sicilian defense. So this with color reversed would be b4 versus c5, right? Like King's Indian attack versus Sicilian. Now, after my opponent played knight c3, I'm thinking I'm going to go c6, and this is an idea that I got from Bobby Fischer. And after rook b1, I know they want to play b4. Thematic in this opening, if you remember when we talked about the English opening, Pawn structure is telling them expand on the queen side. That only makes sense. Now, I played a5, trying to prevent them from doing so. I know that they're going to play a3, but then when they play b4, I get to at least get an open file for my rook. So after a3, I go rook e8, then queen goes to c2, and I play pawn to d5. Now, here the engine is saying... This is completely equal. If I activate the engine, this is actually slightly, well, actually roughly equal, right? And I should have played knight b to d7, knight a6, pawn to h6. And this is just mental note for me to keep in mind, guys. And you're going to see how this h6 might have been pretty nice to have. So anyways, I played d5, c takes d5, c takes d5, and then bishop g5. So you see h6 maybe it was better to insert it from before. Now, after h6, let me actually turn this off. I played, uh, after bishop g5, I played h6. My opponent takes, and here I'm thinking, yes, you're going to occupy d5, but you're giving me the pro bishops. And actually, from before, I calculated this. I considered bishop g5, but in my mind, I'm like, if they go for it, after h6, they have to give me the pro bishops. And they did, then e4, and this is, the first critical moment in my opinion of this game guys i need to decide do i want to take do i want to advance try to pause the video and come up with what you would do at this point in the game what would your decision be and why well in my mind i'm thinking top two candidate moves push or take if i push i'm locking the center i get the pro bishops i should have i should be trying to open up the game and uh, after that knight is going to land on d5. Now, if instead I take on e4, they're going to take back. They still get that outpost on d5. And yes, we get one on, on d4, but they are in better position to attack, to occupy theirs. And then lastly, when I take guys, the d file opens up. So in my mind, they're going to get active too quickly, and there's one rule that you should never forget. If you are behind in development, you shouldn't create any kind of craziness, no attacks, no nothing. Keep the position quiet until you develop. So for that reason, I decided to, uh, to push. Knight goes to d5, of course, and now that knight is coming to c7, is hitting my bishop, so you can see how powerful it is. However, I would rather take one active piece than in the other variation where if I had taken, then the rook comes in with a tempo. So that'll be, well, whatever I do, rook is coming. So rook, then the queen, the knight is coming to the five. So I just compared my two resulting positions and I just went with uh, pawn to d4. So knight d5, knight c6 developing, preventing knight c7. And now I'm only one move away from completing development. So of course we got before, Pawn takes, pawn takes, and after bishop e6, I'm fully developed. Now, you might be asking, what was your big deal with the pair of bishops if you're offering it? Well, here I'm thinking, number one, when we went over that lesson, 111, I think, 
I told you one of the benefits of having the Pearl Bishops is that you get to choose when you give it up. But more objectively here, guys, I'm thinking, what pieces do I want to leave on the board? I wish I could trade this great knight for my bad bishop. It is blocked by these pawns. I wish I could trade one of my other two minor pieces for this guy. So in other words, I want to leave my opponent with the bad bishop that is blocked by these pawns. And I wish I could keep my good bishop or my knight, right? So they're welcome to collect that bad bishop. So they took it. I took back b5. And this is the second critical moment of the game. Same thing. Feel free to pause the video. Work on it. What would you play? Now, my candidate moves. Number one, I wanted to make this work. Rook a2. I thought if rook b2, knight b4 because of this pin. And then when the queen moves, I take, they take, and my knight collects on d3, right? So I was so excited about this variation. And then let's say they go, I don't know, here, and we take. And if something like this, knight b4, knight a3, I mean, knight a2, knight c3. So that was what I had in mind. But the problem is when I calculated rook a2, I realized, well, my opponent could go to c5. I don't have the dodge core bishop. My dodge cores are a little bit weaker. So queen c5 is actually putting pressure on e5 and my knight needs to leave. So I looked at knight a5, I looked at knight d8. I was so close to play uh, either one of those moves, but then I kept looking at rook a2 and I said, you know what? Rook a2, queen c5, knight a5. If they take on e5 with the knight, well, I could just start going after that queen and the knight could be hanging. So most likely they're gonna take with the queen, I take back, knight takes, and then that knight is hanging over here. So my rook is on the seventh rank. My bishop could move with, the, with this covert. My knight could jump over any time. So I felt like I had compensation for my pawn. And guys, I was thinking the whole time about lesson 181, I believe, where we when we talked about one of the ways that we can convert an advantage. So here I said, you know what? Let's go for it. Rook a2, queen c5, then knight goes to a5. And of course, they traded. And at this point, I just knew that I had to play energetically. There's no time now to be quiet. So I need to be energetic. Now here, I went rook to d2, just activating the rook, putting pressure on the pawn. Engine didn't like it. The engine said, instead, activate the other rook and try to bring it to the seventh rank. I thought of that, but I thought, I'm going to do it later. <laughs> so after rook d2, rook c1, and now guys, what would you play in this position? Now, I played one of the top computer moves and proud that at least it was not a blunder. But if you look closer, notice that rook b2 would make this position 0.55 for the white pieces. The one that I chose, bishop h3, gives them 0.94. So I'm not so good in this position. That pawn that I sacrificed doesn't really give me compensation. Of course, this is the engine defending, but just so you know, right? Now, my idea is that if they take me, well, I take back the knight, I leave them with their bishop, I have my knight, but now one of these pawns is falling. So I get my pawn back, I get a potential, or I get actually a pass pawn, whatever I take, and I like my knight versus bishop in this case. But my opponent chose rook c5, which is actually the top move in, or the best move in this position, and now, I, I figured, okay, I have to calculate. I need to decide, should I take? Should I play b6? Should I play knight b3? All of these ideas I needed to consider. Now, I ended up choosing the path of keeping my active pieces. So here I went knight b3, coming in with a tempo, rook d5, or they lose the knight. Now here I calculated, I considered bishop g2 so many, in so many variations, but then I said, you know what? I'm going to bring the bishop back with a tempo. This bishop remains passive over here. Mine is going to be active. So in my mind, I'm thinking the action is happening over here and I have rook, knight, bishop, even the other rook. They got only the rook and the knight. And this rook is getting a little bit weird after rook d6. So rook d6 was played, king g7. This king g7, also the engine recommends it right here. So I don't feel so bad about it. The thing is that I wanted to play rook c8, guys. But then I figured they could do something like this and collect it, right? So I'm thinking, let me not give my opponent anything. Then rook to b6. And also here, 
I'm trying to decide. Should I play knight c5? Should I play rook e7? At the end, I chose rook e7. I'm thinking this rook could stay here defending everything on the king side. Then my knight could stay over taking this quest away from, from the white rook. So rook e7 seemed to me like the right move. The engine preferred knight c5, but forget about the engine. <laughs> rook b1 was played and now pawn to f6. Get out of here. And after knight c4, I simply took on d3. Now, I feel a lot better. I got a pass pawn. And you guys know, we don't need 20 pass pawns. Just one is enough. Now, they have also a pawn here that could become a pass pawn. But it is not there yet. And it's not going to be as dangerous. Plus, the fact that my pieces are more active make the difference. So here, after rook d3, my opponent went knight d6, mistake. And guys, like I always tell you, if you start putting pressure, if you attack, it is so difficult to defend. I've been there on the defensive side, and it's so difficult to find the right resources. So it's always nice to be the one putting pressure. So knight d6 was played, knight goes to c5, and after f4, I just played rook b3. My idea, well, I want to push my pawn. This rook is the one defending, let's get rid of it. And ultimately, I wanted to get my rook from the way of the pawn, with a tempo. Engine says, rook e3, control that pawn, and then you push. But you know, rook b3 was played, rook c1, and now you get to see my first brilliant move, which was pawn to d3. So I'm saying, take my pawn that I'm going to go. They cannot come back to stop it. Bishop comes over, rook takes it. Rook cannot go back because the pawn takes it. Rook d5, I get to take it. Now guys, I know it's not it doesn't seem brilliant, but I'm going to take it. Now, after pawn e5, I considered, okay, let me just advance. If they take me, not a big deal. But then I said, you know what? In so many games, I've left a pawn alive and it complicates the game. So I took it. Engine says, another brilliant move, so I'm going to take it too. And after my opponent took, I finally pushed the pawn to d2. At this point, evaluation is 352 for the black pieces, but... Still, guys, we need to convert. How many games have we blown because we're not careful? So rook goes to d1. Now rook b2. Not the best move, but good enough. Knight b7. We take it. And I'm thinking, well, if you take, I take back. And then bishop g4, bishop b3 is coming. This is easy. My opponent says, let me play bishop f3. Try to hold on a little bit more. Bishop b3 anyways. Rook a1. And here, there were so many moves that came to mind, but I chose rook to c2. Now, I remember my opponent, we had like less than five minutes-ish. My opponent stands up to go to, go to a bathroom, and I'm like, let me play quick. <laughs> so I just played rook c2. Of course, I'm threatening rook c1. He goes like, do whatever you want. I'm going to try to complicate the game and at least threaten either checkmate or chop off your pawns that way. You have, it, you have it more difficult to convert at the end. So I'm thinking, don't give him any counterplay. There's so many options here. Like I considered F, uh, bishop f7. I considered so many things, but uh, even rook takes pawn. But I ended up playing check. My opponent goes to g2. The moment this happened, I'm thinking I could take advantage of this. Bishop d5, deflection, and I promote. But I was really concerned about this. So I went with bishop c2. This is my third brilliant move, guys. In, and I'm even more proud about this one. I keep bragging, right? Because I was in time pressure. And so many times I've blown my games because I give my opponent a chance. So bishop c2, keeping things under control, rook a7, and now bishop e4. Of course, bishop is pinned. I'm going to promote. If they take me, I get my queen anyways. Now check. At this point, I'm thinking, don't get checkmated, don't get checkmated. I gave him my knight, doesn't matter, because I already uh, figured that this position is an easy win. King h3, check. Guys, at this point, it was time pressure, so my opponent resigned, but this is coming. Nothing better. If they had done something like this, I take the pawn, and of course, checkmate was in the air. Yeah.